We will bear our differences with respect, with honor, yet we will work together to promote the nation that we get in. So that forever we will live a nation, a nation that will be the number one nation in the whole world, a nation which is richer than any other nation in the world. And we will live a beautiful nation for our future generations. That is the history we will make for life. Brothers and sisters, we will still stay here and welcome our chairperson to come to stay with us. Without our efforts standing behind him strongly, All right, guys, let's stand up. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here comes the chairman. Here comes the chairman. Here comes the chairman. Thank you again, student. 
Uh, and now, let us welcome our chapter chairperson of Kansas City, and that is Julius Kenyi. to you, our guests, and we start by introducing you, our chairman, Dr. Yagmashar, <clears throat> Deputy Commander-in-Chief, General Ladugore, Chairman of Foreign Relations, Ezekiel. Uh, the Chairman of Transportation, Dio Mato. Members of the delegation, the Office of our Country Representative, Red. Our National Chapters Coordinator, Ramba. <laughs> Members of the Chapter Persons. <laughs> uh, Members of all SPLA in Kansas City and USA. Sudanese in Kansas City and all our neighboring states that are with us here. Today is the day we have been waiting for. We know very well that our country is bleeding, and we have today the man that put the country in his heart, Dr. Jack Marshall. He's here coming to convey to you a message all of you have been looking for. The message of peace, forgiveness, reconciliation, and construction of our broken country, Southern Sudan. I will urge you, all of you to be very attentive, listen carefully to what is bring it to us, and I believe all of you, when you go out from here, will be the agents of our peace in Southern Sudan. You will go and preach this word in your homes or families, in your neighbors, to your friends, and whoever cares about Southern Sudan. Uh, I will not go further. Let me introduce to you the Deputy Country Chairperson, Mawe. <laughs> Mariano is. Oh, okay. Since he's not here, let me introduce to you our National Coordinator, Ramba. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Comrade uh, Julius Dima. Uh, I would like to begin, first of all, by greeting you all. How are you guys doing this morning? I would like to appreciate you coming here, uh, people of Kansas City. You have shown patriotism. <coughs> you have shown patriotism, really. Yeah, you have shown the love of your country in your heart. Uh, the same way our uh, uh, chairman, uh, Dr. 
Machado has also put the country in his heart. Uh, at this time, I would like to uh, appreciate everybody who has worked together with the state leader to put this occasion to look like how it is. Thank you very much. And I would also want to recognize uh, the following offices. Office of the Youth. I would also want to recognize Office of Women. That is Nyakire, however she has left. And I also want to recognize the chapter leaders. Most of them have left. We are left with two here. We have Timothy Kwanda, Minnesota, and uh, South Dakota, that is uh, Chora Chora. And I also want to recognize with honor the following honorables who have just been mentioned. And thank you very much. Welcome all. Uh, at this point, I would also want to recognize our uh, uh, representative, Red Moch, to come and give you guys a word. And on behalf of my office, I would also want you guys to know my deputy, that one who has always stood. <laughs> he has always stood on my right and taller than me also at the same time. Right. So, Red, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Comrade Sabata Ramba, uh, His Excellency, the Chairman and Commander-in-Chief of the SPLM SPLA, the Kavyak Mashar, uh, His Excellency, General uh, Alfred Landrogori, the Deputy Commander-in-Chief, uh, uh, Comrade uh, Taban Dengaj, the Chairperson for the Peace and Reconciliation, and the, uh, the, the Chief Negotiator for our Peace uh, Agreement, uh, Comrade Dio Mato, the Chairman for Road and Transport. Uh, Comrade Ezekiel Olgarcos, uh, the Chairperson for Foreign Relations. Madam Angeline Tay, and all the protocol observed. I uh, would like to thank the people of the greater city of uh, Missouri, Kansas City, for the good welcoming and organizing this very wonderful gathering. Uh, we are here today very happy, and we want to tell you we know you have done a lot yesterday and uh, uh, because of the time and a lot of meeting that took place behind when you left Omaha, Nebraska, we didn't make it on time and today we are here with you. The chairman canceled a very important meeting in Washington DC that was supposed to take place today because he want to see the people of Kansas City. This is a very good time. The SPLM SPLA stands for democracy, stands for change. We want to do reform in our country. Uh, we, it, it's not a work of one person. We all need to stand together behind our leadership. We know all of us that are here the vision to change the country. It started from the independence of South Sudan. He was the first person who is poor, is too tall to call for the self-determination of South Sudan. A lot of people did misunderstand him, and they call him name. But he's a man who's patient. He did not give up, even though most of the people, many of South Sudanese in the first place, uh, begin to misunderstand because our politics, you know, politics in South Sudan is, is, is almost based on, on tribe, and, and people mostly listen to their tribal leaders. But Dr. Reddy stood the test of the time, and now we are in the stage of realizing a free and democratic republic of South Sudan. I know there may be names that come up because I have learned something from the chairman and they visit uh, talking about the name of South Sudan. For the first time I never knew that, it, it, it never came into my mind that we were called South Sudan in just a direction. I, I went to school but it never crossed my mind but I was really convinced to what he said, that we cannot call ourselves with a direction. And if there are a few people who are going to, to debate this South Sudan, which will be given a name, I would be among them. And, and I, would, I would suggest that if we go for people, Republic of Sudan, as he suggests, that would be a wonderful name, because we don't want to leave the name of Sudan. We need to, to build up SPLM. The chairman is calling us to reconcile and start the, the process of reconciliation among our community. And you know, here in the U.S., I have been living for almost two years in the U.S., and I have seen 
and everywhere I go, I tell people that our people are really divided. Our community is very fragmented, and mostly it happens in the diaspora, because the diaspora, they are the people who are well informed about the media, the social media, the internet, and all this. So they rise on this time. And now with the message of Chairman calling all of us to cease all the, the austerity on the media, and, 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 and declare also the, 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 the media warriors, declare the ceasefire on the media and start calling for the peace and the unity of South Sudan. I'm not going to go, to go further, because I know it's our chairman who have thing to tell us. And we know we, we reverse everything, uh, because we want the chairman to speak to us, and he will later on give chance to, to some of his delegation who want to, to come in and, and say something. So with this, please, may you allow me to welcome His Excellency, the the by the first by president designed it, and the chairman and commander in chief of the SPLMS PLA, the Torian Mashate, to come and give you a Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yesterday we were supposed to arrive here at around one. We failed to do that because there was a very long prayers which was held in Nebraska. And I found that it was a chance for me also to pass the same messages which I want to pass to you today. So I'm sorry for those who waited for long. I had even gave instruction. If it is because every time we finished, some people would want to meet General Alfred, uh, who would mostly be notorious. So he said, if we can start meetings of this kind to make people busy before I arrived. But I was told this was refused. And I had wished now, if I was informed earlier, to say, you go ahead with the main meeting. I'll come and conclude it. I could have found you meeting, back in Malish. Uh, it has been my interest to speak in Kansas. Not only to the supporters of SPL and SPLA, bracket I would. I had wanted to speak to all. So I was told, you were 200 in the hall. But this is, this is the time for us to come together, talk, discuss issues, and particularly that the peace agreement has been signed. First Vice President, <coughs> uh, Vice President Mwane had come to you, and I believe you if you had attended that meeting, they had talked about peace, I believe so. Because there's nothing in the, in the four heads of people now except peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I expected it would be peace. So I'm going to talk about peace. Because what brought me to US the invitation, which was sent by Ban Ki-moon, and we said this is a chance for us. So we came in, and instead of me coming with three people, we came in, because we want to talk about peace. And Ban Ki-moon wanted us to talk about peace, and we have finished that meeting. We have told him, and the rest of uh, the leaders of the difficulties, the challenges in peace, in the implementation of the peace agreement. So we have told them this. And in brief, it is in security areas. We still have challenges. Because the workshop that was supposed to uh, resolve some of these issues did not resolve them. So we hope there will be another meeting to resolve this. Uh, 
Secondly, we were concerned about the deployment of troops, particularly in foreign troops, withdrawal of, withdrawal of foreign troops to base Uganda. The deadline is the 10th. Today is the 5th. So on the 10th, all the Ugandan troops will be out. The other difficulty is on the Sudanese rebels. The government has not taken responsibility to tell them to leave. But in, in the security arrangements, we agreed that we will all assist so that they can leave. And if they don't want to leave, they hand in over their guns. And then they are repatriated. But I think they will take the choice of leaving peacefully going back to their country. And hopefully, talking with the Bishir to get a peace agreement uh, there. I know there is a forum which is led by <laughs> President Mbeki to resolve the issue in the north or in the current Republic of Sudan. <coughs> so these are some of the security challenges that we had. Uh, and we told the we told the, the leaders of the world. We added the fact that President Trump has reservations. <coughs> it keeps people uh, guessing. Is there going to be peace? If President Selva has reservations, what would be the, the peace? Because if you, if you sign a contract, if some of you might have signed contracts. You don't sign a contract and then you say I have reservation. The contract will be dead. So we, we raised that because President Selva talked by video and repeated that he has reservations. So the international community is asking, if you have a reservation, what is the commitment to the implementation of the peace? So this, these are some of the, the security difficulties, security or political and security arrangement difficulties or challenges. Uh, there are other challenges. For example, we have to con control assembled forces you can turn them in specific areas. This, the, the committees have agreed. But then when you put armed people in the specific areas, they will need food. They will, first of all, they will need shelter, at least a tent. They will need food. They will need medicine, drugs, water. <coughs> so that you can confine them, because assembling and containment means confining them in specific locations. This is a difficult, that, that needs money, needs support, so that tomorrow we don't blame them for roaming the villages. The other aspect is what we are now doing, another challenge. How do, we, how do we sustain the mobilization <coughs> for creating awareness about the peace? There are difficulties in it. Because we need to reach people on the ground in South Sudan so that they understand that peace has been signed, peace is, going, is being implemented. The regime in Cuba has, has TV and radios. We in the liberation areas, we don't have. How do we reach people? You've got to go to them physically. You go physically to them, talk to them like we have now come to you in, in Kansas. And as I said, and, uh, to me, it is not members of IO that I want to speak to alone. I want others. I was told, uh, according to here, board members here, let them come and listen to me. Because then they, <laughs> then they will pass the right message because I am the one speaking. 
not anybody else. So passing the message of peace, dissemination for it, is very expensive. And since the war was bitter, it is good that people understand it and they see the seriousness of the two parties. When Comrade Wana came here, you might have seen his seriousness. You would also come and see my seriousness about the implementation. And even when Comrade So it is a challenge. It is a challenge. Dissemination. We other challenges we resolve with the international community. But the main aspect, main main issue is that we want to implement the peace agreement. Even if there are reservations, we want to implement it. Even if there is continual violation of the ceasefire, we should make people aware of uh, this peace agreement. Well, some may ask us, why, why, why do you, what is in that peace agreement that you like? First, we think it is, even if it did not meet our minimal program, it has met the bottom minimum, not comfortable but it is something to work with that we can bring about peace. So we say, since we didn't start the war, we did not start the war, somebody might have told you that we made a coup. We didn't make a coup. Nobody who, who is in the Jalabi wants to make a coup. It is somebody who put a, a khaki. That makes a coup. When you are ready for a coup, you your gun will be ready, your, 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 your military fatigue will be ready. So basically there has been no coup. There were differences, and then the president decided to get rid of some of us. But we say we overcome it, let's overcome it. We are alive, although many people have died. But with this, other processes will take place which I will talk about. So we, we think the peace agreement, as long as it brings in a new system of governance, and the system of governance which this peace agreement is bringing in is a federal system. Anybody who is doing Dreaming since 1947, the leaders of 1947 in Yuba called for a federal system. If Khartoum had implemented it, maybe it would not be two Sudan. But because they refused it, we developed the demand of people of South Sudan to self determination. And finally, so who is going to lead? his wounds. is the North that is licking his wounds now. Not that, because they refuse our offer. So the country split. Okay, now that we are independent, should we not apply the system which we have been advocating or advocated by our people since 1947? We should. In South Sudan. It was not meant just between South Sudan and the North. It was also meant for us, ourselves. Because what, what are we? We are a diverse nation. We have nationalities, we have tribes, we have different languages, we have different cultures. We have different religions in South Sudan. And if you don't put this diversity into consideration, the country breaks. This country is diverse. You know, you might see them 
or is in their own way. But those who founded it saw that there are diversities in it, and therefore they implemented the federal system. That is strong. They are one country. They are really they are a big continent. They are states. So, so likewise we can have states. We can have a federal system. We advocate a presidential federal system. This is in the agreement. You see it from chapter one to chapter two to chapter three, four, five. You find references federal. We had wanted the states to be identified when we were having discussions. The regime in Cuba didn't want. And three days ago, they surprised us with a list. And a year, last December, in a conference, we advocated 21 states based on the British districts. Because the British districts, they have borders. The borders are delineated. The borders are demarcated. They are on the map. So we, we said, Let's move to 21 states. 10 states are too big. But when you move to 21 states, and those borders are clear, the old district of Bogrial has its borders. Nobody's tongue is, going, is not going to quarrel with it, or unity is not going to quarrel with it, or northern Baharagiza, they will not have questions on the borders with Bogliar because they are written, they are demarcated on the map. So we said, we go to those 21 districts. Three days ago, President Selva, I think after he went and reconsidered our position, he turned up with 28. When you look at the 28, they are problematic. Because some of them, for example, let's take, take northern Baharagizal, northern Baharagizal, divided into two, two states, and one of two of the counties are moved next to Raja. This is going to be a problem. Would that be acceptable? Just as, just as an example, you come to the Shiruk Kingdom, part of it is uh, next to uh, the eastern part. How are the Shiruk going to react when we know the history? The President and I were, we were in Malakal on the 1st of January 2009. There was fighting just because Somebody said, I would be in the front of the parade. Another one says, no, I would be in front of the parade. Suddenly there was fighting in the stadium. And we were all there with President Bashir. And we were never asked, why? And they said, they should have wanted to be in the front of the parade. And the then the Padang want to be in the front of the parade. Okay, what was the normal? That used to be the Shuluk. Now when you create a state and you annex Malakal and part of uh, the state to, to the Eastern Bank, this is a recipe for a problem. But if we had discussed these during the, the discussions, during the negotiations, maybe our our logic for 21 states would hold. When we had problems with the North during the CPA, during the negotiations, all of us were there. How did we resolve it? <coughs> borders. We say, okay, borders, we go back 1956. 1st of January, 1956. Why? Because we know the British did that. The British were colonial power. They didn't care. 
who was in this place, they made the border, they marked them on the map and on the ground. With the, the, the provinces, or it is the district, it is. Or people like <coughs> quarreling over things, things that sometimes may not be material, but borders are material, a serious matter. So, but my, my topic is federalism. Even with the statement made by President Sanford three days ago, is a reflection that we all want federalism. So federalism is important. It resolves problems between us. See. Now, so it's one reason why we say, oh, this agreement is good, we can live with it. Second, the set of reforms, the set of reforms in the agreement, reforms in the economy, reforms in governance, reforms in the judiciary, reforms in the security. This, this, these are very important. You create a new army, a new national security, a new police. You will also put into consideration that you are moving to a federal system. What should security look like in a federal system? What should the police look like in a federal system. All these are contained in the agreement. So we, and also the economy itself, reforming it under the new system. So we said, okay, this is good, we can live with it, even if it has not done all that we wanted. Then, the, the, the chapter on, <coughs> on, on, on uh, accountability, transitional justice, transitional justice and accountability, national reconciliation and healing, and then compensation and reparation. This, this are there. In it, someone who have committed crimes, particularly crimes against humanity, war crimes, genocide, uh, ethnic cleansing. Those people must face the law so that impunity is wiped out. Some people act once in the tamanja, in the pistol, and you are in uniform. You, you now begin to forget that you are accountable to the very citizens that you mistreat. And that is why it was very easy to, for genocide to be committed in Yuba. Because they, the people are used to impunity. We want to get away from this. And therefore, <coughs> this chapter is important for us. The hybrid court will be formed. That will handle these issues. The hybrid court will be headed by foreigners, <coughs> Africans in particular. That is a lesson. Because you don't wake up in the night, tomorrow morning you kill your people, like what happened in Yuba. So that chapter is there for those who lost kings, who lost relatives, and who lost also property. You can't, you will, you will find it difficult to carry them on board to accept the peace agreement unless you have a provision that justice shall prevail, that those who committed crimes would be brought to book. So in the, in the agreement is that. Now, compensation. A lot of property has been destroyed. Lives have been uh, lost. There's need for compensation. And it, this is in the agreement. It is tedious, it is difficult, but it will have to be done. 
so that we respect property. The man who takes the baby just knock a house. Zema and the shy. Just because probably you don't like its owner. So we have to we have to learn from this. We have to learn from it. Uh, so there is compensation. Now the most difficult, which is also in the agreement, is national reconciliation and healing. National reconciliation and healing. I have talked about the destruction, loss of lives. But will our people live separately in one country? Will they live separate? Uh, President Selva has created 28, 28 uh, states. If you, if you count them out by tribe, like what we see in some, what does it mean? I don't have to have a house in Wara. I don't have to migrate to capital uh, to Raleigh. <laughs> I don't have to uh, do business in Kwajo. Or what does it mean? Federalism does not mean isolating people by tribes. It's not, it's not the meaning. It is creating a system where you rule yourself. It is even transitional. That all of us are transitional. If all our people become urbanized, you will not urbanize them. The marks won't be there. The language, one language will predominate like now, Yuba Arabic is being done by most. Your neighbor is not going to be your tribesman or your section man or your clan person in town. This is urbanization. Again, maybe Missouri was established by a group of uh, some Europeans and mixed with some Indians. They were joined with others where they saw opportunities. Now you cannot tell who is who. This is going to happen to us. So it is, federalism is not isolation. It is quickening the process of urbanization. People living together in higher densities, in towns. So, when, when, when you create uh, states, you have to think over them properly. And if you have no time, follow the, what was done by others, British districts. They're not problematic at all. You'll find in one district, two to three tribes there. There may be one bigger. But they had lived together for time. So now reconciliation. How do we do the reconciliation? America, all of you now have become yeah, sharp tongues. You have very sharp pens. You get into the internet. You disseminate your ideas. Some of them are very hostile. Some of them are very constructive. During the time of war, you were at liberty to say anything. But now you're moving towards peace. You want peace. What will be your attitude to your uh, country people who are with you? Will you still have barriers? Or will you 
take the courage and say, look, this thing has to be resolved. How do you direct your pen, your thinking, your sharp thinking? Will you still continue fighting in the internet as a, an internet warrior? Because your writings don't end up here. They are read in Juba, they are read in Yay, they are read in Bajo, they are read in Bentiu. Bentiu now the internet system is destroyed. They are read in Malagalo, the system is destroyed. Or in board. How do you conform? How do you transform to the fact that the country is moving to peace? Will you support the idea that X has reservations? Or will you move forward and say, keep the reservations, share with them, let's move forward? Reconciliation is a, a challenging issue. When you hide from <coughs> listening to ideas, when you hide, you don't start dialoguing. But the lady, man, you can't say to the stronghold with herself, but we put that hand in there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go and dialogue with her. Yesterday, I was told you we were 200. Whether they are supporters of Westfield or Westfield IO, or supporters of the regime, I wanted to talk. I wanted to debate with them. Of course, it's important. If, if I cannot come to cancer, then will I go to people? In Juba there are guns. <laughs> In Kansas there are no guns. <laughs> so we, we, we should start the process. Uh, some pe people told me, why don't you come back? I said, no. The little number I'll get, I'm, I will talk to them. One day something will bring me back to the UN or to the, uh, Washington, D.C. By that time, someone will be troubling to go, go and listen to me. <laughs> yeah? Or then I'll make another mission and say, OK, in Kansas, I didn't get all the people that I Maybe it's time to go and talk to them. And that will depend on whether I see, I, I, when I'm monitoring whether you're still internet warriors. <laughs> but if you have become peacemakers, then I say, well, the, 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 I have got messengers who send the message to those who are skeptical. We came also to New York because the, the AU Peace and Security Council was discussing the report. This, this is the report of final report of the violations. It was distributed to us in Addis, the heads of the state, and we as a party to the conflict. But we were told not to give it out until they discussed it. Finally, on the 26th of December, of this month, October, uh, sorry, September, they discussed it. And it is now public. Read it because it will help you in the process of reconciliation and national healing. It has a very strong chapter on national reconciliation and healing. So we, we want you to know of it, because who knows, a friend of yours might get himself involved, but you may be a lawyer. You, might, you will have to think of how to defend him in court or devise means of how to get about reconciliation. <coughs> so our people from our side, we have sent, we started kicking off uh, disseminating the peace agreement in Addis. I was the chief 
that day. And then we sent a delegation to Nairobi under Dr. Dill and to Uganda under the deputy chairman where they met the authorities of Uganda and to Khartoum under the chairmanship of Dr. Dill and to Cairo. We have covered South, we have covered the diaspora <coughs> of the neighboring countries. So we felt we should come to you. We don't want you to remain in the cold. We want you to be constructive citizens that will be supporting peace, that will be disseminating peace, that will contribute to consolidating peace. That is, that is our mission. So I want to stop here. We want to hear your questions. It will not be me alone who will be answering questions. All of us will be podium here, and some uh, among you here will, will contribute to answering your questions. It's unfortunate that yesterday we haven't, we, we couldn't catch up. But nothing is too late. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Now the most exciting time has come, and uh, the Chairman is ready to take your questions. It's time for Q&A. And so uh, we will take it by panels here. So if somebody has a question on this side, uh, one thing, the ground rules for the questions are that you try to keep it precise, all right? Do not try to lecture somebody. As user, we don't lecture people here, but we ask questions, all right? So that's how we're going to conduct our questions. So uh, let's, let me see your hands up if you have a question. Yes, sir. I, I was, uh, this question for to Dr. Oriak. I need to know, when you go back to Juba, what's your position in the government? Are you going to go back to the vice, or uh, how are you going to share the, 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 the leadership with the, the, uh, the Sarko Kimaya? Okay, let's take the next question. Yes, let's say here first. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is uh, Gilles, Gilles Mutian. I'm a chairperson of uh, Betu community. Uh, my question is based on the conversation of the people who lost the property and life. So who is going to compensate the people on property? Is the government of South Sudan or United Nations? Thank you. The next question. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Dan Mudut. Uh, I'm from Kipayali, Turale. So thank you for mentioning Turale. Uh, my question is, um, when you came up with the 21 states, uh, the issue of uh, state, uh, I mean the territory, uh, yeah, I think, I looked into it, but I didn't see the uh, the purpose. For example, uh, United States has Washington D.C. Australia has a Canberra. Capital. Yeah, capital. So, and three days ago, when Salvador came up with uh, with the 28th state, he didn't he didn't tell us the citizens the issue of the, the national. The, the federal federal government territory. What do you what do you propose about 
the uh, federal territory area? That's my question. Okay, let's get a question from my right hand side, which is more closer to me. Uh, my name is Lopo Gore. I'm from Central Equatoria. Uh, my question is going direct to Dr. Yang uh, My question based on the genocide that happened after uh, the so-called uh, coup. And then after the massacre of both by the White Army. What will be the solution or the situation that after you will be back and you will be questioned by the international organization, you and uh, Mr. President Salvaqir Mayati, about the massacre of Cuba in the first place? And after the rebellion happened in Bor, after the massacre of Bor by Israel, what, what will be the solution when the international organization asks you two people? Because what I've seen, like uh, in 1940 or 1950, you know it very well, when uh, Kenyatta, uh, Jomo Kenyatta say, when the two elephants fight in the grass up. So that grass, are we in Juba, are we in Bor? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I stop here. All right, just quickly, <coughs> let's keep our questions precise. We want to maximize usage of our time here, please. Let's keep it precise. There's a lady there. Oh. Okay, ladies first, possibly. I'm sorry, guys. Thank you. I thought we were being limited out. Uh, my question is like this. First, um, thank you, Mr. Riyak, for coming to see us in Kansas City. Yesterday, we are so tired of waiting, but thanks God brought you to meet us. My name is Nora. I'm from Central Victoria. My question goes like this. Um, as you mentioned about the land, I myself, I got a land in Cuba. Now it has been taken away from me. I don't have any home now. Where am I going to go? As you people say, we have to go back home. I don't have a home now. Where will I go? Secondly, as the president has mentioned the states, say 28 states, my question is going to the capital city. Is going to be in Cuba still, or is going to go where it has been selected before? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question with I, I don't understand. Is me a arena good out here? from Northern Barkaza, I will. Laman Shaka Labada Fi Juba. Then I is here about now, while I just be there. I didn't confuse the news. So, I had to be in Arufu, Jan Lomashel and Arufu Munu Yaukan, Harab, Katal Shab, Sudan. The Sarfa, or Yamachar. So, they have added on the Sarkin, madam. I am so confused. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's move to my left. Uh, thank you so much. I have two quick questions here. First of all, my name is David Bang uh, from Canada. First question is about IDPs in various uh, town or cities in South Sudan. Are there plans to get these people 
back to their place. In that 31, I mean 30 month transitional period. The second one, I mean the second question is about leadership, uh, governance. That uh, Your Excellency, uh, Dr. Dore, put up together. How much power did you give to, 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 to leadership structures? Because you can see here, or even in South Sudan, that there are things that can be handled by under secretary. But because of the tendencies of our people, they wouldn't listen to, let's say, a chairperson of a, a national committee, they would not. They would wait for an answer directly from you, not even from your deputy. So how much power do you give them? Or do you still have all the powers to, to decide and settle everything? Thank you. Yes, uh, we have one question, and then, uh, and then we will we'll have the questions answered. So we have one question, guys. Keep your questions for next time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Michael. First of all, I would like to commend you for being a champion, for being a first person to put a signature on that important document. <laughs> it is going to prevent. Viva! 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 Uh, secondly, being a man of peace, I also like to commend you for extending your hand to the G8 during the time when things were hard. You see, unless they were released, no meaningful negotiation could have happened. Although when they were released, they gave you a lefty hand. I don't know, sorry for those who you know. Now, my question is uh, about the decree. President Salva Kiir has been as a a missed power on himself issuing decrees, appointing his friend and the people who are going to help him, even including the MPs who are supposed to be elected by the people. And we confronted, he said, well, I'm the elected president, so I have that right. Um, of late, you have also issued some decrees. So my question is, is there any link between uh, democratic principles and uh, issuing all these decrees. Now you're going to be ruling together with the Salva Kiev. Do you, in particular, have a system in mind that is going, you know, for the governance other than uh, decrees? My belief is that a decree is a form of dictatorship. Are we going to continue this decrees or you're going to put the system? in place for the government. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Let's give hands to these questions, guys, and have them answered. OK, the chairman has spoken. Three more questions. OK, let me answer the question. All right, thank you. Because I have increased. If there were three, we would say yes. Uh, let me ask my colleague. Does anybody want to answer any question? <coughs> and, okay. Alfred, you, yeah, you, Patrick, kick off. You can do that. Chairman, for this opportunity. And also, let me apologize to people of this city for the mess up who happened yesterday. And it is good that our chairman took responsibility upon himself and the delegation that we arrived late. People were waiting in the hall for almost more than eight hours. I thank you very much. Also, I want to recognize the attendance this morning. 
uh, we know very well this is Monday, and uh, our people are off day now for three days because of these consecutive events which are taking place. We know very well Kamal Wani was here the day before yesterday. We are we were supposed to be here yesterday. And today, you decide to call off the, the work and come to listen to our leaders. This is uh, good and we appreciate it. I just want to attempt the root cause of this conflict. One of the uh, speakers uh, picked up a very critical point that is who is that who is started fighting this is really very important and i want to pick it up as one of witness not because of my ethnic background but i want to tell reality i want to say reality and i want to be in records on this issue this is really very important because the country belongs to us and we want to make it a beautiful country like this country of America, where you are now uh, hosted. Comrades, I know very well, and all of us know this, that the machinery of media in Juba play a role to mislead South Sudanese that the war is an ethnic war, is a fighting with the United Dinka. It was a fighting generated by the power anger leader who won with a shortcut to power. And hence, he attempted a coup. That was how these things were projected, actually. In our side, we don't have media like SSTV. Thank God that this is the era of, uh, of Facebook. But actually, we could not leave to extend how things were projected in Cuba. This is not true completely. What happened, and most of you, are actually members of the SPLM, the ruling party. They know reality. What happened is this. You know, comrades, we went for liberation for more than 21 years. And the reason we fight North, it was not because they are brown in their color, it was not because they are Muslims, actually, but the Southerners were not happy with the system of governance. That was the reason why there was a war for more than five decades. We were looking for the good governance, the better way to administrate our diversity. We are nations, and we believe that we can create a good formula that can bring our unity, can make us all feel belonging to a place called South Sudan. This has not happened. After we liberated ourselves from the north. We decided to divert the cause of people of South Sudan. The slogans that we use to raise the justice, democracy, equality, we forget them. We decided to follow the footsteps of our colonial masters. The Arabs. I was part of the members who were mandated.
to make transitional constitution of South Sudan 2011. I was a member of that body and I witnessed how things were actually manipulated and diverted. The constitution of Sudan and South Sudan of 2005, which derived from the CPA, I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, it was more friendly to people than the current constitution. There were elements of, there were element of federalism in that constitution where the judiciary, executive, and legislature were actually taken to the state level. But when we are about to have our country and we decided to make our own constitution, we revised that constitution and tried to centralize the aspect of federation. I was part of discussion, one of my comrades, a veteran to the liberation, somebody who stood up for the cause of people of South Sudan. He was fighting for democracy. He was fighting for justice, equality. He was fighting for the decentralization, the participation of the people. He stood up and said, we were not for federation. When the aspect of federalism were discussed, he said we were not for federation. We were cheating Arabs. And we want to confuse them, say that we continue with the war. But since we got our independence out, it is time to centralize the government. That was the statement from one of the comrades, somebody who fought the war of liberation. I was surprised. I couldn't keep quiet. I raised up and it was on record. I reminded them that, brothers, if that was the conception, I tell you, we are going to fight people of South Sudan. This is what happened exactly now. This is exactly what happened. Because we were not fighting Arab because he's Arab. We were fighting injustice. We were not fighting Arab because they are Muslims. We were fighting injustice. And anybody that will attempt to do injustice, it will be fought by people of South Sudan. The coup theory, it was coined in order to cover up something. Because there was a debate in the ruling party, the FLM, Victor Machar, he stood up clearly, actually. During the time he was by president, some, some people now used to say he, 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 he just spoke or he just he began to speak because he was relieved from this position. That is not true. In that constitution, in that constitution I said when it was being formulated, he wrote his own version and he served us members of the constitution with his thinking and ideas about how the country should be ruled, especially the Federation. And it was rejected by those of Dolu, those of Mike Makui, those of Larry, they rejected it. He defended his ideas in the Council of Ministers, but then he was by president. But because people don't talk to the government of Selfa, if you are an employee of Selfa, it's a crime to talk. And you know, you know the case of uh, of Abdullah There are so many. You cannot criticize. You know. So, but actually, he stood up in Council of Ministers. He defended his position, but he could not make it. He further submitted his own version of constitution to the assembly. And you know this this uh, statement by itself of that. We are not one in, in the government. <coughs> the vice president has already submitted his own constitution into the assembly. We are two government. It was because of these ideas. So the call for federation and justice and equality has not started in the FLMIO. It has been there since we were in the government. But because <coughs> the president don't want actually criticism, 
He don't want justice. He don't want democracy. He don't want to give chance to others who express their aspiration to rule that country. He decided. He decided to coin who theory, and it has started since 2012. And I want to remind it, my sister Reggie is uh, my auntie actually. I want to remind it her that the fighting in Juba has not started in, 20, in, uh, in 15 December. It has, it has been planned since 2012 when a big force was recruited, especially Nagam Margadan and Warab, and they were brought to an area called Luri in order to be a special force that could protect the president if there is anything. This is where actually the conspiracy is started, and this is how people were actually mobilized without knowing it, that there is going to be a fight. We in the SBLM, we decided to fight the government in April 2014. This is after four months after some of us were chased away and we are being chased, people want to kill us, we ran away. Our chairman decided to resist when he was called by many of us in Nassau. That was April 2014. This is where we, we, we started war. Otherwise we have been resisting, we were running away. So war is started in Europe. We were the one who started the war, and we know this very well. It collapsed in the court. When some of campus were arrested, the, the detainees, they were arrest, arrested, and, and they were charged of treason with our chairman. But what happened? The senior commanders of the SBLA Juba and their ship intelligence come up clearly in the court confessing that there was no coup. And the, and the case and the case collapsed in the court. They released those of the loot because there was no evidence that there was there was a coup. Some friendly countries like Uganda, when they met in the meeting with our chairman, President Museveni, said clearly that there was no coup. There was a fighting in the presidential guard. Just the people fighting, not, not, not really coup. So there was no coup. So we were surprised when we saw Comrade, Chair, Comrade President in, unit, in, 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 in uh, uniform, fatigued, declaring that he managed to arrest the situation and he managed to arrest the, 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 the people behind coup. And some of them, including his leader, their leader, is at light. He mean Comrade, uh, Comrade uh, Riyaku, Comrade Alfred, and Comrade Taban. They were supposed to be arrested. This is how things actually went out of hand. It is true, the war took this ethnic uh, uh, side in the beginning. Because after this, A statement in the media that there was a coup, and coup was done by Riyak Machar and his tribe. The Hungary men, young men from the Dinka in Juba decided to target Nuer. And when Nuer were targeted, you know, this is the time of technology. We have now a smartphone where we can speak and inform our relatives. The Nuer people were, were formed that there is a killing in Cuba, and Nuer has been targeted. Such and such were killed. This resulted into revenge. But who was responsible? This resulted into revenge in many states in Greater Abanai, where there were dickers. They were uh, targeted. But who was responsible? Our chairman by then was running his life. He don't know. 
What is happening? So it was because of that press statement made by the president, which actually uh, uh, drive the country to anarchy. We are really very happy that we managed it. When it was moving to to Bor and Gadian, it was trying to calm down the situation, and he managed actually. He managed to calm down the situation. He managed to inform the people that this war is not an ethnic war. <coughs> because some of his comrades already they were captured and they were put into jail. Those of Majana God, those of the Gate you know, those of Gangan, these are thinkers. They were arrested. So he was telling them that, look, what is taking place is not a fighting a tribal fight is the government who is deciding to to target one ethnic group and we can manage it. Thank God that we manage this, it could not happen. Our people need to know this, that there is no country which can be ruled by one tribe. The 99, the 99 presents vote for independence in self-determination of people of South Sudan. We are not making up one tribe. And the mind in the government is out here me and of Sudan. This is a making of people of South Sudan. And we thought our leaders, especially in the FPLN, the president and his comrades, they will use that as a platform to unite people of South Sudan. Because already we have we have the unity. Since we managed to gain our independence by voting 99%, that is already a unity at Yama. But unfortunately, we were drunk. People attempt to drag us to this situation. You have listened to the Gorbachev and way how we addressed all these concerns in this agreement in the peace agreement. This peace agreement is going to create a better South Sudan that we are all for it. <laughs> South Sudan is going to be look like America and Jamaica. This is reality. If, if, if we implement this agreement, because what we want is that all. We are going to reform the institutions, there will be no tribalism. If we reform the institutions according to the agreement that we have now, there is not going to be corruption. We know that some of you are not happy because the leaders of the FDN have decided to rule their country. This thing is going to be stopped. It's not going to happen. We are going to concentrate the little resources that we have to development. We are going to put them on the roads. And I'm happy. He tasked me with the responsibility of roads. I'm now looking around to see how the buildings and roads are constructed in this country. Let me put that down. We want, we want your support, all of you. We want your support as a South Sudanese. We are for peace. We came here for peace. We want each of you to put his hand with us, with Selfa, in order to implement peace agreement. This is where we can have a better country. Thank you very much, Commissioner.
is the root causes. Uh, if you don't identify the root causes, you wouldn't know where to start your reconciliation and healing. Um, on the night of 15, um, December 2013, uh, we were just uh, entertaining some people in our house and we were having a, a dinner discussing a website. Uh, because uh, I was told to, to develop a website. Um, so that's what we were doing. And uh, really we, we just picked up ourselves, thinking that in the morning we would come back to the house. Um, and the reason we left the house was because some of the um, chairmen's guards were feeling very uneasy. They felt that the house was in one way or another surrounded and that they would not be able to protect any of us in the house for that night. So we reluctantly agreed. But I want to add, um, there was a statement made by uh, the gentleman there uh, speaking about a massacre of war and a massacre of children. Um, it's important to relate this story. We arrived born on the 24th of December and a very heavy bombardment, including the cluster bombs that were being uh, thrown on us by the Ugandan forces. Uh, not only cluster bombs, um, but cherry with very heavy artillery, <coughs> some I've never heard before. We intended to just rest a little bit more, but um, with this, uh, and there were gunships as well. So we could not stay, it became very hot, and we had to leave. But I, I want to say something as well, because when we were coming, we met a lot of people in Mangali, coming from this, coming from Meg uh, from Megali, and from other places, and they included families with children. So we had to escort those people to the Udmi's camp in Juba, in, in, in Bor. In Bor, by that time, many of the citizens of Bor, and especially the Dinka Bor, had crossed across to Aliyah. General Gadet had helped them to cross to Aliyah areas. Um, Anyway, we started to march. I also want to say that the White Army and the reaction to the bombardment and the chasing that started from Juba, the reaction started on the 31st of December. That is almost more than two weeks later. <clears throat> By that time, the people of Bor had left Juba Bor. And when the government forces came to board, there were Nuer people, Ainua people, those who felt that maybe uh, the situation would be arrested where it was, they did not leave board. Those were the victims in board. And this white army that came to, to recapture board. Actually, they walked from the long way, they walked from the Gawa, and some Lak people. They passed some Dinka villages on the way. The Dinka villages included the Nyarwe, the Twitch, the people of Duk, and so on. And those people, when they passed them, nothing happened to them. So the misleading in the media that there was a massacre in Bor. In fact, the people who died in Bor <coughs> were mostly those who did not go to Aliyah area, which meant they were not in the Bor. And they died in the hands of the government. But there were many battles fought in Bor. In total, 11. Uh, and by that time, many of the civil population had either 
that either it would be scammed or they walked northwards, uh, northeast, coming to Gadia, uh, all the way to refugee camps in Ethiopia and so on and so forth. It's very important to have these records right. Um, even some of the Western people who went with that impression and were given the impression in Juba ended up in an embarrassing situation reporting uh, things that were not accurate. And this, if you look at the UN reports, because UN have done a lot of reports on this, it's very important to check and read those reports carefully. Some of them will give you an idea of what had really happened. And this is key. But on that, I want to move on to talk about, um, you know, he said when the international community comes to us. In the agreement, there is a hybrid court to be established by the AU. Uh, this hybrid court is to try those who have, in one way or another, engaged in the violation of either the international humanitarian law, human rights, committed massacres, genocide, ethnic cleansing, you name it. Um, but there is another important institution which is called the Truth Commission. And this Truth Commission um, is the tool where we all go and tell our stories. Um, and anyone who thinks that they can make up stories uh, is better than think again. Because even, for example, if you talk about Bantu, institutions such as ICRC have already done investigations on some of the issues. Um, we from the IO have always fought very hard for the release of this report of the Commission, the AU um, uh, Commission of Inquiries on South Sudan conflict. Uh, and this is because we open ourselves to scrutiny. Because we, we say justice is an important aspect and an important pillar for actually uh, building this nation and fighting impunity. Uh, and therefore, we fought very hard that this report needs to be released. And justice needs to be served. And it is up to the person who's been aggrieved and the victim to decide to say, I forsake or I give up my right for justice for whatever reason. Uh, even though we are embarking on a process of national healing and reconciliation, that's not a substitute for justice. Um, and I want to say, um, again, in supplement of some of the statements that were made by Dr. Hill earlier in this matter, uh, because this is a very important matter. You know, when we were walking for Chiba, and on hot pursuit, or under hot pursuit, at one 